Press Coordinating Dabble 2021 this year. Thank you, she's doing a great job. We're looking forward to perhaps a Dabble market in November at Garver Feed Mill. It's still working out the logistics, but we're pretty confident we can have a one day art market again. And we'll be reaching out to a lot of you visual artists to be a part of it. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Olivia. And thank you, Adalia, for being a part of Dabble. I'm really excited because I've known Angela Johnson a number of years and I've always been challenged by her work. I've seen it as a cross discipline of various art forms, a combination of science and education and real thinker. She often causes me to sit back and say, wow, what was she thinking? Where's she going with this work? And I'm really thrilled because she's one of the few of a few here in Madison who's a true independent working artist, meaning she's making her living through her art. And that is so rare. And I'm thrilled to have an opportunity to have her present today on Jumpstart Your Creative goals for 2021. Um, there's so much I could say about Angela, but I want to make sure she has enough time and that she introduces herself to the wealth of work that she presents here in Dane County. So thank you, Angela, for being with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you again to Mark, Sarah, and Dane Arts for having me today. And before, before I start and tell you a bit about my background, this is going to be interactive, so if you haven't had a chance to make sure you have a notebook, paper, pen, highlighter, variety of writing utensils, take that moment and grab those things or have them near you now. So um, again, as Mark said, my name is Angela Johnson. I am a creativity coach, an artist, and an educator living in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I grew up in Madison as well. I'm just going to share a bit about my, my background with you before we dive in. I earned both my MA in art education and MFA from UW-Madison. My work tends to focus around installation, um, alternative uh, photographic processes, and bookmaking, as well as installation work that I mentioned. I've done a few public installations uh, around town. Um, I've had the opportunity to share and show my work widely too. Just a, a Small subsection is I've been in group shows in Fort Worth Cultural Arts Center in Texas, Tilt Gallery in Scottsdale, Arizona, um, Photo NOLA in New Orleans, Photo Fest in Houston, and uh, part of a group show at the Museum of Wisconsin Art. As a heads up, you'll see some of my photography throughout today's talk, which is intentional to, uh, to the work. I've also been a lecturer at UW-Madison, teaching both intro to digital photography as well as uh, darkroom. I have 22 years of experience teaching art in uh, education in formal, informal learning environments, including elementary schools, museums, senior centers, colleges, and universities. I'm a small business owner of Angela Johnson Artist, which has a few creative branches intentionally, uh, if you look at my, my logo, um, the branches are creativity coaching, teaching, and making and selling my artwork. In terms of coaching, I've had well over 100 hours of coaching just this year. I've been studying with Eric Meisel, who is a guru on creativity, and he's written over 50 books. Uh, lastly, my mission statement for my business is to offer high quality creative and mindfulness services, online art classes and creativity coaching to enhance personal growth, self-confidence and support of client and participant goals. So with that, that's a mouthful, but I wanted to share my background with you before, uh, before we get started. So let's begin with our overview. Uh, I've just given you my introduction. We're going to talk about some, some tools for jumpstarting your creativity. Uh, some of those include a short, uh, short free writing. We're going to go over some mind mapping as well. I'm then going to talk about creativity coaching as a, a tool to utilize and work with. Sarah and I are going to do a mini coaching session to model for you what coaching looks like. Then we're going to have a wrap up with Q&A. And uh, stick around till the end. There's some really exciting offers. Um, some, again, exciting offers and some freebies. So do stick around. 
Whoops. So starting point, begin where you are. That is both simple and profound all at once, right? Uh, I, I read a quote in uh, Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. Um, someone was talking about, you know, well, I don't want to learn to play the piano now. I'm at an old age in my life. How old will I be when I learn to play the piano? Answer is the same age as if you don't learn to play the piano. So it's never too late to start or begin. You just need to start where you are. So with your sheet of paper, with your notebook, um, take about 30 seconds and just write down what brought you here today. Uh, are you, what goal do you have in mind? You know, what, what drew you in to coming to this hour long talk today? Second thing to mark down in terms of uh, what is your creative goal, or if you have a handful of goals, just make note of what those are. Again, about 30 seconds. And the last thing, take just a moment to think about how you organize or plan your goals. Do you just start, hit the ground running, see where they go? Do you make lists? How, how do you see your goals through for them to happen? We'll take about 10 or 15 more seconds with that. Finishing up writing, I mention the photographs that you see uh, throughout the presentation are um, my digital photographs. Um, I wanted to mention um, my husband, Justin Bittner, and I are part of a really fabulous art servancy, year-long art residency project. It's um, sponsored through the Ozaki County Land Trust. Um, in Ozaki County and is in partnership with Gallery 224 in Port Washington, Wisconsin. There are 12 nature preserves that um, folks can uh, apply to be a part of, and they have a year to explore uh, a natural park, a residency, and to make artwork inspired by the space. Sarah is going to add into the chat um, a, a link to Art Servancy. This is they're in their third year. And um, I believe applications, if you're interested in a nature art residency, would be next August or September. And um, she's also going to add in the chat a recent nature blog that came out about the project that Justin and I are doing. So just wanted to let you know, intentionally, these works are, are in there. Our preserve is uh, Zinn Preserve, located in Hartford, Wisconsin. It's 187 acres. And uh, amazing, you should, you should absolutely go, but know that it's not completely accessible. There's one path that's short that goes all the way to the lake and the rest is, is off trail, but beautiful and amazing. So with that, I want you to take what you wrote already, what you thought about. I'm gonna set my timer for about three minutes and um, I haven't started yet, so don't, don't start just yet. Um, you're going to just free write for three minutes. Keep your pencil moving. Just focus on, on free writing. You're, you're not worried about spelling or punctuation. Uh, as, as Linda Berry says in her classes, if you can't think of what to write, write, I can't think of what to write. Or write the alphabet until something comes. So with that, and I'll interject and talk a little bit as you're going, because otherwise it's an awkward quiet three minutes. Um, go ahead and start, start distilling, start writing about your goal, everything you can possibly think of. So what are the, 
What are the parameters around your goal? Have you started the goal? Is there a, a timeline? Is it a long term? Is it something that's short term? If it makes sense and you get stumped on words, you could draw an icon or a symbol to go with your goal. Just keep the pen or pencil moving. We're at about the halfway mark, about an hour, just kidding, <laughs> about a minute and 30 seconds. In suggested uh, homework I give to coaching clients in classes I teach, this homework assignment would be, uh, or this assignment would be adapted to be about a 20 to 30 minute free write. But given our time today, that would be about half of our time together. So this is a small sampling. And in a little while, Sarah will add in some examples and uh, some suggested directions for mind mapping into the chat. Again, that's for reference for later. It's not necessarily what we're doing today, but something for you to expand on later. We've got just under a minute to go, so keep writing. What every possible facet, thought, idea you can think of for your goal. Keep, keep writing. We've got just about 15 seconds to go. If you wanna wrap up your sentence, wrap up your thoughts. So from there, go ahead and you're going to briefly review your writing, maybe have a highlighter, a gel pen, a colored pencil, maybe a different color um, utensil next to you. Review what you wrote, highlight, circle, underline a few words that really stand out to you. Again, if this were a longer situation where you were writing for 20 or 30 minutes, you would identify words that showed up two or three times or more than two or three times, but maybe that didn't happen in a three minute free write. So, Underline circle uh, a word phrase that captivates you. And before we move on, um, does anyone want to unmute un their unmute their mic? <laughs> That's hard to say. And um, share what your word or phrase is. I can go ahead and share uh, a couple words, Angela, this is Sarah. Thank um, you. So I got probably about a full page of writing in, uh, very scratchy handwriting. So I kind of did four words that stuck out to me. Um, those words were more, build, provide, and support uh, for my goals. Those are great words. Thank you. Maybe one or two other folks care to share out? Yeah, this is uh, Mark. I can I can share. Um, the word I circled was revenue. Great, thank you, Mark. And one last person, if you want to share, I'll go. I guess. Um, <laughs> but first, I wrote one of the things I wrote was I want to I want to sell, um, and then I wrote or at least not care about selling, um, and and that was kind of. Uh, a bit of a revelation um, because of course there's two ways to deal with that feeling. Um, but, but the one thing I wrote multiple times was that I wanna move people Ooh. in a positive direction. Those are fabulous, thank you. Is it Daniel? 
Thank you for sharing, Daniel. That might be really interesting to work with in your mind map, how those, how those formulate and fluctuate. Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, I'm gonna offer you now to, on a new sheet of paper or the back side of your paper, you're gonna start a new sheet where you're going to write your word or phrase at the top. Um, this screen kind of shows as a model and you're gonna write down, uh, uh, draw a line down the middle with, you're gonna look for synonyms and antonyms of your word. So if you had a word or phrase, or if you had multiple words, I'd kind of distill that down now to one word or phrase, or this gets kind of tricky. And with synonyms and antonyms, this could be literal, it could be metaphorical, like don't limit yourself to, you know, however you're thinking about this is, is absolutely fine. We're going to spend just a minute or two on this. And if you only get like four antonyms, no worries. Just write down every word you can think of that's similar to your word and everything you can think of that is the opposite of your word. Don't overthink it. Kind of like what we were doing with the free write, just just right, just keep your, your pen or pencil moving. Let's go about 30 more seconds. Okay. Does this feel like a reasonable time to, to move on to the next? Okay. If you didn't finish it yet, zero worries. So when, when I did my free writing, the phrase that came up for me was studio practice. And so for, for my list of synonyms, I came up with making art, craft, diligent, goals, having a schedule, flow, happiness, boundaries, cutting the cord, uh, building habits and routines. And my antonyms were stagnant, thinking about energy, not being in my studio, stuck, not creating, perfectionism, which is another way of, of potentially being stuck, putting others first, having no deadlines. Nothing gets done without a deadline, right? <laughs> And uh, slacker, email can be the opposite of studio practice. I try to not have my email or my phone, my computer in my studio because that can just sort of pull me away from creating. Um, distractions, my studio is at home, which is amazing, but you know, so are the dishes and so are lots of other distractions in the house. And lack of planning were the ones that I came up with. We are going to, I just, we'll, we'll share some more things out in a little bit, but for sake of time, I wanna make sure we have enough time to keep flowing and working. So on a new clean sheet of paper, um, I offer you to, you can get really, really detailed with mind mapping for the sake of today. I suggest you use a basic shape to kind of uh, map out your mapping and ideas. You can use the light bulb icons later, but for today, you might wanna consider focusing more on the content than on how your mind map actually looks. So I started with a simple circle in the middle and just wrote studio practice. Doesn't matter how big, how small, go ahead and take a minute to do that now on a clean sheet of paper or another sheet in your notebook. I also offered here on the slide, you know, you're not limited to a circle. You could do other basic shapes as well. From there, you're going to begin to kind of build out categories, subcategories. I would encourage you to think about what your words or categories are before you put 
the circles up. What I mean is, if you end up making an octopus with studio practice, and I have like eight lines and eight circles, as I'm building it out, if I don't actually have eight subcategories, <laughs> it looks like there's pieces missing on my mind map. Does that make sense? So start first with, with your word, your circles, and let me show here on this next slide, things that I found really important for my studio practice are allowing for flow to happen. Well, projects are also important, knowing what I'm gonna be working on in my studio. Being organized is pretty important as well. And so are having deadlines and something to work towards. So with that, let's take the next couple minutes. Uh, let me stop. Does anyone have any questions or comments on this first? or need for clarification. All right, I'm seeing some heads shake no, so fabulous. Let's start with about two minutes and we'll we'll see where, where you're at. So go ahead, pick a shape. Also get, get creative. You're here because you're wanting to kind of jumpstart your creativity. Think about dotted lines, arrows, you know, different types of shapes. As, as well as you're going. So we'll, we'll do a check in about two minutes and see where you're at. As a recap, it looks like a few folks may have recently entered. We did a bit of free writing to identify a word or phrase associated with the goal that you're working on. And we're building a mind map. So starting with a, a shape in the middle with your word or phrase, and we're branching out kind of categories and subcategories based on your goal, if you're just tuning in. We've got about one more minute before we move on to our next phase. Allow yourself to be surprised too. If something comes up and you're like, I don't know where that category came from. Go, go with it. Allow yourself again to be surprised. Does this feel reasonable time to take a pause and I can move on to the next step? So from here, you've had a chance to distill and break down a little bit your categories. So again, as using my example of studio practice, if I'm allowing for flow in the upper left-hand corner, scheduling out time chunks, planning what projects I want to prioritize. I do uh, marbleizing as part of my practice. And I can't just decide to schedule two hours to go into my studio and marbleize. You have to coat the paper first a day in advance you have to get the solutions ready. So really being specific about what I want done when. And uh, projects, you know, when I go into my studio, I, I do encaustic work, bookmaking, photography. Uh, I, I have a dark room, sketchbook, journaling, like it's overwhelming when I think about it all at once. So I need to kind of chunk it down and figure out what I'm going to do to kind of build upon what I'm working on. And from there, again, breaking out deadlines into, is this a short-term, long-term project? When can I have check-in points to make sure is this working? Am I on track? Um, in terms of supplies, I have like a, a full closet of supplies that I have all of my bins. I'm working on labeling them so I know what, what is where to keep myself organized. So with that, 
I want to offer you to take about two more minutes again to take those subcategories and break them down even further as to what needs to happen to get closer towards your goal. Are there any questions or comments on that? All right, we got about two minutes. Remember, as you're doing, this can be visually fun as well, using dotted lines, spirals. If you have other utensils, crayons, colored pencils next to you, grab those, change them up. Again, make it a fun working document. We have about one more, one more minute. about 30 seconds. And no worries if you're not done. This is this is just kind of getting us into it. So from here, I'm wondering um, Take a moment to write down um, what your nugget, did you have anything that you sort of were able to isolate out or extract? What was your nugget or takeaway from creating the mind map? Or starting from the free write, the synonyms and antonyms to the mind maps. Did you have any aha moments? Maybe some things kind of threaded together or fit together in unexpected ways. My guess is your mind map isn't done since we've spent a, a total of about maybe eight minutes working on it. So if, if it's not done, why don't you write down an intention or a plan to finish it and review it or add to it? Maybe it's you're writing down and scheduling 15 minutes to work on it tomorrow or after the session, but go ahead and write, write your intention down. Or if it is completely done, you don't have to write an intention for later. Uh, I, I'd like to offer at this point, um, if one or two people might want to un unmute and share what their nugget was or how making a mind map, how that experience was for you. I can share. Um... One thing I wrote was, you know, creating protected time for inspiration. Um, so that's something I noticed coming up is that I wanna intentionally make time to get inspired. And when you suggested picking up some other tools or um, I noticed that I got more excited about my mind map um, once I added some color to it, um, it just made me like, made it much more attractive to me. Thank you, Whitney. Appreciate you sharing out. Maybe one, one other person? Angela, I can share. This is Jane. 
Hi, Jane. Hi, how are you? Good, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Um, I am my mind mapping was all around basically art sales and the aha thing that came to me was overcoming my practicality since I have a reputation, but I'm trying to find ways to make sales in particular with printmaking. Um, that's the thing that seems to block me because I have so much backup of what I've already created and ideas for creating, but I'm trying to um, get to the point where the art creates um, the the money to buy more supplies, do things like that. I feel like I'm building up a lot of stuff and it's all sitting in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure and, I'm not alone. <laughs> sure. And and how how did it feel to come up with that aha moment? Uh, it it just made me realize who I am. I'm a very practical person, you know, so it's you know I, I have to place for it to go <laughs> <laughs> great thank you Jane I appreciate you sharing um uh with Whitney's and Jane's takeaway too I wanted to suggest a, a tool that was recently shared with me in an artist residency meeting um a, a woman talked about making project lists that she does, she writes all of the physical things she needs to do. So she'll make a cat, like two categories. She's a quilter. So, you know, kind of patching her pieces together. What are all the actual physical hands on things to do? And this blew my mind life-changingly awesome. Her second category was what are the cerebral things you need to do? So if you're trying to brainstorm or figure out problem solve a thing, but if it's something that happens up here, she schedules time to go for a walk weekly or daily and actually intentionally tries to problem solve. And I think that is an amazing tool I've, I've recently instilled. Were there any other questions or thoughts on this mind mapping activity? You have a comment. Hi, this is Sarah. Um, I actually really like this activity. You know, I feel like I've tried to do a bunch of mind maps before, but they always end up being like to-do lists. Uh, so I kind of let myself go from that one of like, I'm not trying to solve anything. I'm trying to like get more of a top level perspective. And I feel like I kind of had an aha moment just realizing that like the success of uh, the design creative company Underbelly that I work for is like very wrapped up in the success of our artist collective members as well. Like we are all a working team uh, and, you know, like, it's like the saying of like, if you go alone, you'll get there, but if you go in front, you'll get much further. Than seven I'm sorry, say that last sentence, we missed. <laughs> it's okay, I think someone forgot to mute themselves. Uh, I was just saying, it reminds me of the saying of like, if you go alone, you'll get there faster, but if you go with friends, you'll get much further. Uh, and I feel like that really um, applies to our business model with our uh, artist collective for our creative agency. Great, thank you. And I, I love that you had that aha moment. I also like to think of this as if your idea is like a big bowl of spaghetti or a big meal, perhaps you're extrapolating out the noodles, the sauce, in my case, the veggie meatballs, <laughs> the cheese. And when you're able to look at all the ingredients, you can see how it fits together and how it best makes sense to go together from there. So. Um, and let's have maybe one person share out what is your what is your plan to go back and spend time with your mind map if you're not done? What what have you scheduled for yourself? Um, Whitney, let's put you back on the spot. What what is your your, your plan or is your map complete? Yeah, no, uh, my plan is right after this call um, to just revisit it. Cause for me, I will procrastinate. I'll say, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow. And so for me doing it immediately after the, the call is, um, is the best plan of action, I think. Thank you, Whitney. And if you post it in a place where you see it often too, that can be something that keeps you keeps you looking and motivated. So thank you, Whitney. 
Um, from there, let's transition and talk a bit about a really big, fabulous tool as well, which is creativity coaching. And uh, I'm before I dive into my explanation, I know there's folks in the audience here who know what creativity coaching is or might have an idea. So I wonder in the essence of, of interactiveness, if anyone would like to share what creativity coaching is to them or what they know about it. All right, that was approximately a six second pause. Awkward enough that like no one actively wants to share, which is great. So I will dive right into my metaphor for coaching. Um, I'll first start what coaching is not. It is, it is not a mentorship. It is not therapy. Uh, what it is, is it's a partnership between a creative and a creativity coach. Um, and I specifically put this image up here. It's um, a, a long exposure image I took in the Great Smoky Mountains showing flow. The metaphor I'm gonna use here is coaching is essentially a roadmap uh, that, that you have a map, you've created, started your mind map today. But um, when you coach with someone, um, let's just say, for example, Whitney, you and I are gonna work together and you want to go to, uh, we'll, we'll pretend these are the Redwoods. So you hop in your car, you invite me along, and uh, we're, we're gonna drive to the Redwoods. You are in charge, you are driving, you hand me the map, and together through asking questions, exercises, we determine what the best way to get to the Redwoods is. Where do we want to stop along the way? Do we want to go up through Canada? It might be really beautiful, but this time of year, there might be, you know, there might be roads that are closed because of snow. Uh, do we want to drive through like the middle of the country? What benefit would there be going another direction? So again, thinking of it as, as a roadmap. Um, coaching is, is, questions and working together and reflection, it's accountability, it's having suggested homework, it's again moving towards your goals. And just going to share a little bit of uh, folks I've worked with in the past, types of clients for creativity coaching. Um, I've worked with fellow coaches, um, a few of which are, I believe, here in, in today's talk. Um, retired professors, professional artists, small business owners, stay-at-home moms, career counselors, entrepreneurs, retired scientists, working professionals, art curators, art educators, art hobbyists, and writers. And my particular specialties are creativity coaching, project planning, and meditative and mindfulness coaching. And with that, um, Sarah has agreed to do a mini session of coaching uh, for you to model what a coaching tool look like can look like. So, Sarah, are you ready? Yep. Fantastic. So, Sarah, tell me a bit about what uh, what the goal is or what you were you were free writing out about. Yeah. Uh, so my free writing. Well, okay, so other than being a dental producer uh, for this event, I'm here because um, I'm creative director with Underbelly Creative, which is a, a small boutique creative agency uh, and artist collective. Um, so generally, I kind of separated into like two goals. Uh, so one is more clients to build our business, uh, which is kind of a long term and a short term goal. Um, and then a second goal is to, buy, to provide ourselves uh, with this to, to be our main income so that we aren't working like additional projects and that sort of thing. And also to provide uh, more opportunities for our collective artist members uh, for art to be their main source of income and their main gig as well. Uh, and then like the next part I wrote from the free ride was just like the question of how to get there with balancing um, additional jobs, responsibilities, because uh, it kind of becomes like, a, well, we want this to be our main thing, but we are doing the supportive thing 
uh, of like other jobs. Um, so we don't really have time to do it. So like, how do we reconcile that was my general like main free write. Great, thank you. And um, those are several specific but distinct goals. Um, from those, let's distill down and which one would you like us to talk about for now? Yeah, um, so from the like picking a main thing, I picked build because uh, I think that kind of succinctly defines what the goals are. You know, it's building more clients, it's building more opportunities for our collective members, and it's building it into um, a business that can be like the main thing for people. Tell me a bit what uh, building more clients would, would look like. Paint this yeah, um, for that. So we have uh, several clients that we work with pretty regularly, and we're all always getting new ones. Uh, whether that be a small business, an individual, an organization, or the city. Um, and I think that the main goal would be to uh, have enough clients that we could be perhaps like a little bit choosier with our clients. Uh, so like we really like working uh, with like direct to consumer businesses. So bus businesses that provide like a very specific service or product for people. Um, and, you know, just like for where we are as like the main people working with Underbelly, we're all in our late 20s, early 30s. Um, so we kind of have like a millennial spin on stuff. So we want to work uh, for um, places that are interested in bold designs, fresh designs, and a little bit less corporate, a little bit more fun. Okay, thank you. And tell me a little bit about your uh, two questions, your time frame. And what are your overarching thoughts or plans for building? Like, how might you achieve that? So again, two questions there. Yeah, so for time frame, I don't think I have a really good answer for that. Um, I think Olivia probably has a better answer because she's better with numbers <laughs> and we work together in terms of why. Um, but I, I work a little bit, or I think a little bit more abstractly than in like direct numbers. So like, you know, I know that we've had conversations of like, by this month, we want to have X amount of clients, but honestly, I can't remember it. I'd have to look at our notes. But we do have that defined somewhere. Um, and then the second question, if you could remind me of it was? Um, what is the, the plan? Like what oh, are yes. your overarching ideas for bringing in more clients? Yeah, uh, so we do have that as a plan um, just to like make it shorter because it's, you know, we meet about this a lot. We project a lot of like, how do we want to do this? Um, Olivia is a really fantastic like entrepreneurial brain. So she's like the you know, she's the brains of it all. Um, so I'm kind of parroting things that I remember, um, but we have like a growth plan. Um, so we do certain things to like market ourselves as like a creative marketing agency. Uh, so like, for instance, we are really into print materials. So we made um, a zine about our accomplishments and our services, et cetera, to send out to people that we think would be good clients for us or possibly people we have worked with previously, kind of reconnect with those people. Okay. Thank you. And what will success look like for you um, in terms of achieving this goal? How will you know that, yep, I can check it off the list. It's been done. Yeah. Um, so for short-term goals, it would be like a number of clients or like X amount of money being brought in so that we can uh, pay ourselves and also throw opportunities towards our collective members. Um, I think a long-term one, it would be, can this be the main gig for everybody that wants it to be their main gig? So it's a little bit of a nebulous goal, but it is a goal kind of nonetheless. Okay. And with, within this, because this is a short and condensed session, not a 60 minute typical one, is um, before we get to action items and homework, suggested homework, was there anything around your goal of wanting to build more clients you wanted to talk about or ask questions that we haven't talked about so far? Um, yeah, so, you know, obviously if this was a longer one, I would probably bring up like, how do we reconcile like the very real time constraints that many of us have like working other jobs, um, et cetera, while also trying to grow because obviously those two things take quite a bit of time. And then another concern that I would bring up is just like, you know, how does COVID impact all of this stuff? Like with such uncertainty, like in our individual lives, um, as well as like businesses, uh, bottom lines and that sort of thing. It's, you know, it's it like exists in my mind as like quite a barrier uh, to like proceed because there's just so much unknown. And I think like my question would be how to like sit with that discomfort or like manage, um, you know, like the real concerns of like, you know, financial security, that sort of thing. So lots and lots to dive, 
to dive into. For, yeah. the, for the sake of, of today's time, um, I'm, I'm wondering, Sarah, if you could take about 30 seconds to summarize our conversation, and then if you could list two or three action items you could take in the next week to move closer towards your goal of building up more clients. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think that the general summary is like, you got kind of an overview of what I'm up to, what my concerns are, things that occupy my mind surrounding this business, um, where I want to be in like a nebulous idea and where I want to be more like concrete numbers, uh, statements sort of thing. Um, and then two things that I will be doing to reach my goal of building, um, I think is to discuss with my team, uh, like budget concerns, that sort of thing, just like kind of get a handle of like, just for my understanding, like I know that the team has an understanding, but I don't necessarily have an understanding of like, um, you know, like what amount of clients at like what level will bring us closer to that goal. And like, can we kind of map it out uh, again? Cause just cause I know that we've already done this, sorry, Olivia. <laughs> uh, so that we can kind of have like a projection of like at what time we will be kind of sitting a little bit more securely. Um, and I think the second one would be, because there's kind of two parts of my goal, uh, looking into like other opportunities for our collective members um, to like get paid and see where we can also add uh, projects for our collective members inside of the clients that we already have. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate you doing a, a mini session to uh, model. Yeah, happy to be the guinea pig. <laughs> Much appreciated. So. With that, um, I offer everyone to take a moment to review your mind map and kind of modeling what, what Sarah and I talked about in her, uh, her mini session, write down and write out two to three small action items or small steps you could take within the next week to start moving towards your goal. Perhaps it's making that phone call you've been putting off for two months to like figure out how to do X, you know, they can be small items. Maybe it's, you know, labeling things in, in your studio. I also want you to write down, think about how will you hold yourself accountable? Like, how are you going to make sure this, this happens? Your, your action item could be emailing me and telling me that you did you did them if you want some accountability. And then um, we'll take about 30 more seconds. And then I'm going to offer if, if a few folks would want to unmute your mic and share what your action items might be and or how you're going to hold yourself accountable. And Whitney, because I can see you right here, and I, I honestly can't see and have no idea how many people are out here with my slide up. I, I would like to offer you to share with us, please. <laughs> Absolutely. So my first action item, email Angela, thank you, and that I finished my mind map to hold myself accountable. Fabulous. And um, for the second item, I kind of am in the middle of this project where I'm spray painting or I'm so I have all the tools to be spray painting some um, like branches and leaves from nature, but I haven't gone out and done it. And it's a pretty cold day today in New York here, but I have decided that after I email you, I'd like to get that done right away too and just put on a coat and get it done there. Sounds great. Sounds like you have a great action item plan and you have your day planned out. And thank you for tuning in from New York City. So next, I offer you to take a moment and identify some areas of resistance or stumbling blocks as you're moving towards the school. What might get in your way? Like the fallen tree in the image here, is it, or do you get easily distracted and, you know, when you go get a glass of water in the kitchen, you end up doing all the dishes and reorganizing the kitchen cupboards before you get back to the thing you're meant, you're meant to do. So what excuses might come up and how are you gonna work around those obstacles or excuses?
and Whitney will just put you on the spot one more time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, for me, my cell phone, which is right here, definitely an obstacle for me. Um, I have been getting a lot of texts during this call. And so I just wrote a note down here in my notebook that I can address my cell phone at three o'clock. Great. Thank you. Let's, oh, Sarah, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was. I was just trying to unmute myself. <laughs> um, I think that one resistance that probably a lot of people can uh, understand and sympathize with is just feeling of being too busy. Uh, so how to step around that for me, I think I'm just going to carve out like non-negotiable time uh, for me to sit down and do work. Because uh, yeah, I'm definitely one of those people who are like my, my cell phone, like what you said, or like somebody knocking at the door or like the news or whatever will totally derail me for a whole day. So Great. Thank you. So at this point, um, we're going to do a temperature check. You've started from your goal. You, you wrote down synonyms, antonyms. We've done a mind map. Um, you wrote kind of an action plan out steps and how you might get derailed and how you'll come back. In one or two words, write down how you're feeling in this moment about those goals. And I invite anyone who would like to share their word or two. More focused. Ooh, those are good. Thank you, Jan. Let's hear yeah, from, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, um, this is Sarah. I would say accountable just because Olivia is also on this call. Uh, so I know that she's heard everything I said and now I can't pretend I didn't say it. Fantastic. And let's let's do maybe one more. Uh, mine is optimistic. Ooh, that's a good word. Thank you, Mark. And all, all of those words are kind of really focused and will really kind of help drive the force be, behind your goal for each person who's, who shared. So thank you. Um, so from here, we've done our, our temperature check. I want to share a couple really, really cool offers. Um, one, if you enjoyed today, um, on my homepage of my website, AngelaJohnsonArtist.com, if you go there and sign up for my monthly emails, and it truly is a monthly email, and I won't share your information, um, that's just upcoming classes, workshops, creativity coaching offers. Um, if you sign up for it before Sunday at 7 p.m., I'm going to randomly draw a name from my my little decorative box that I made. So I'll put everyone's name in the box and I'm gonna pull a name out um, Sunday evening and I'll post it on Facebook. Um, you could win an hour, an hour long coaching service uh, with me, which is valued at $110, which is an awesome offer. But I wanna say that the offer below, whoa. Um, uh, the first, five creatives here who are interested in booking out a session of, of six to get six, six hours worth of coaching. Um, I've added a $20 discount and Dane Arts has very, very generously uh, is going to supplement $200 per person to the first five people who sign up for creative coaching uh, before the end of the day Sunday. So if you're interested in this, you just go to my website, shoot me an email. Um, you were here, put in the words Dane Arts and that you're interested in coaching and we would come up with a plan from there, whether you're interested in weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. And again, that's a, a savings of, um, I believe $220 if you're interested. Uh, again, directing you to my website, I'm not going to read all these testimonials to you. You can take a moment to read them if you'd like. But if you go to my website, I do have a free uh, free resource page where I have some uh, downloadable coloring sheets that if you're wanting to feel creative, you can share. Um, this one is a photo I took on a barrier island off the coast of Chavin, Louisiana. 
This one is the Burren in Ireland. I also had off the press have some downloadable bookmarks that you could um, print as well with some of my images. They're big, so you don't lose them. And when you cut them out, they're two-sided, two so you could paper clip them together or you could use a glue stick and glue them together. So again, AngelaJohnsonArtist.com, there's free resources you could take advantage of there. Um, I would be remiss not to mention, I have a, a host of upcoming workshops and classes I'm teaching around the state. Most are virtual because pandemic, um, but uh, again, I'll let you read the list here. They're also all on my website as well. Um, couple one, I'm, I'm excited about all of them, but uh, especially I'm giving uh, an hour long mindful meditation um, at uh, through the Chazen Museum of Art in about two weeks. The focus will be on trees and visualization and um, pandemic pending, I'm leading a week long visual storytelling workshop up at Dillman's in the North Woods in September. Lastly, at the bottom, I have a design your own creative adventure um, that can tailor for a, a group of folks. Um, projects could include bookmaking, yoga, meditation, um, collage, photography. There's more info on my website about that, but wanted to make sure that you, you knew about that as well. In summary, we started with an introduction. We talked about many different types of tools from short free writing to mind mapping to what a, a useful tool creativity coaching can be. Sarah and I did a mini session and now we are at the wrap up and time for Q&A. So with that, I thank you and I'm going to close my, uh, my slides there and if you are, if, if you feel comfortable and want, I offer you to turn your mic on and turn your camera on if it's not already. And would love to take a few minutes for Q and A. I have a, a um, question. Sure. And this is great. And. I love your style and you make it sound so easy, you know, and so I do all these, use your tools and do the mind mapping and do all that. And it's that there's something internal that needs to get unstuck. You know, what do you have any tips for actualizing all these goals? And, you know, I set the goals and Yeah, uh, well, first, it's good to see you, Yvette. Thank you for uh, tuning in from Chicago. And it, you know, it, it might be kind of thinking through, writing down, do some free writing on what some of those kind of stuck or maybe internal things are that are keeping you, like what, maybe what's below the surface metaphorically that's, mm. you know, mm -hmm. not seeding or blooming if if that makes sense but i would start there certainly with some some free writing set set the timer on your phone mm -hmm. sit down and and just start writing about what's blocking me about what's blocking you maybe do a mind map on what's blocking you yeah that's a great idea just voicing this to you feels like um i let i lifted a uh, dam or something you know thank you Thank you, Yvette. Yvette, thank you. Yvette, oh gosh, I've known you for like 10 years and I'm saying it wrong. People who've That's known funny. me almost all my life still do that. It's Yvette though. <laughs> thank you. Since there's silence on the, the radar, it, it feels like perhaps we have come to the end. I want to thank you again for tuning in for the past hour using some creative tools and resources. Uh, please visit my website, sign up for my, my monthly mailer for a chance to win one free coaching session. Please also feel free to 
take Dane Arts up on their very, very generous um, offer to give a, a huge discount for to jumpstart your creative goals with a package of six coaching sessions. So thank you very much. With that, I'm uh, gonna ask Sarah to, to take it away and conclude our session. Awesome, thank you, Angela. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. I dropped in the chat uh, the Dane Arts website to sign up for the Dane Arts newsletter. Lots of really great opportunities there for artists, uh, people interested in arts, et cetera. So it's danearts.com. Sign up on for, for the newsletter on the bottom. If you want to watch any of our past Dabble sessions or this recording, go to dabblemarket.com. We have all of our workshops from this year and our upcoming workshops, as well as all of our workshops from last year. Uh, lastly, if you want to please send us feedback about this workshop, I sent that in the chat as well. It's just a super short Google form. Uh, you can tell us how we're doing, if you have any ideas uh, for speakers, things you want to learn, et cetera. Mark, is there anything else you wanted to say? No, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Angela, for your time. Dane Arts will do its best to help all individual working artists as best as is possible. So don't hesitate to contact Dane Arts. So I'm glad I had nothing else to say, Sarah. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day and a great weekend. Thanks.